Hi everyone, I'm Robin, and what I have behind me right here is four jars of peach wine fermentations. These are all made using the reject peaches that I've been collecting from the farmer's market. And the video that I posted recently where I did a side-by-side -side tasting of the reject strawberry wine using two different yeasts kind of motivated me to do this experiment. So as you might guess, each one of these jars is being fermented using a different yeast. Oh. So the base that went into these jars is exactly the same. It's the reject peaches that have been cooked down, sugar is added, and I also added pectic enzyme. I kept it really simple and didn't add anything else yet. I might add <laughs> some nutrients soon. Um, but anyways, these have been fermenting for six days now, and immediately there was a difference in how they were fermenting. Even now, they are at all different points in the fermentation process, and I think that's so cool because each of these is a Saccharomyces species of yeast. The four different yeasts that I chose are, we'll go from farthest to closest to me. I don't know if that's left to right or right to left for you. In the farthest jar over here, I chose the Red Star Premier Cuvée. Next to that, I chose the Lalvin D47. Next to that, I chose the Lalvin K1V1116. And right here is kind of my like maybe control. I don't really want to call it a control, but this is a fermentation that I started using Red Star Distillers yeast. Now both the Lalvin D47 and K1V1116 and the Red Star Distillers yeast are all Saccharomyces cerevisiae strains. The Red Star Premier Cuvée is actually Saccharomyces bionis. All of these yeast strains are used for different styles of wine or for the distiller's yeast, in that case, for distilling. The Premier Cuvée is recommended that it's used for producing red and white wines and especially sparkling wines. It also is recommended for restarting stuck fermentations and has a high alcohol tolerance up to 18% ABV. It has a wide temperature range for fermentation and also is said to have a fast fermentation rate. Now the Lalvin D47 is recommended to be used for producing high quality white wines, especially full bodied and barrel fermented wines. It also has a high alcohol tolerance of 15% ABV and a wide fermentation range and is said to have a moderate fermentation rate. The Lalvin K1V1116 is recommended to be used for producing fruit wines, which I am. It's also recommended to use for low nutrient musts and to restart stuck fermentations. It also has a high alcohol tolerance of 18% ABV, a very wide fermentation temperature range, and has a fast fermentation rate. Now, distiller's yeast is not really used for producing wine or for producing beer. It's used in distilling, which means it has a high alcohol tolerance, works very quickly, and ferments at a wide range, so similar to all the attributes that all the other yeast have. Um, it also is a really clean fermentation, so there shouldn't be a lot of byproducts. So let me tell you what I've observed over the last six days. Immediately, the K1V1116 was taking off fermenting as soon as I tossed it in. Whereas the other fermentations kind of lagged behind a little bit. The slowest one to get started was in fact the distiller's yeast, which surprised me a little bit, but you know, these ones are more suited for wine, whereas distiller's yeast is more suited for other types of fermentations, I guess. But they are all continuing to ferment, so there are visible bubbles in all four of these. The K1V1116 has started to slow down a little bit, while the other three have a nice high frequency of bubbles being produced right now. I can hear it burping behind me. 
So all four of these are at different specific gravities. They all started at the same specific gravity of 1.089 same temperature, 88 degrees Fahrenheit, and everything. But now the premier cuvee is at a specific gravity of 1.063, which would put it at 3.4% ABV and a long ways to go. The Lalvin D47 is at 1.039, which would put it at 6.6% ABV, still some ways to go. The Lalvin K1V1116 is at 1.030, which would put it at 7.7% ABV and also still has some ways to go. Our distiller's yeast right here is the one that's farthest behind, but not too much farther than the other Red Star yeast. This is at 1.064, which would put it at 3.3% ABV and quite a ways to go. Now, what I was very excited about, which I will let you guys in on, is I wanted to see what these looked like under the microscope. Could I actually see a difference between the three Saccharomyces cerevisiae strains? And could I tell the difference between Saccharomyces here and the Saccharomyces bionis? Before we look at these under the microscope, I want to give a huge shout out to the Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel. And if you, the viewer, want to help support the channel so I can do more experiments like this and more videos like this, make sure to join us on Patreon. The link is in the description below. So let's check out these four wines under the microscope.
right, so I'd say there were definitely differences and a little bit more than I anticipated. We'll start with the distiller's yeast. To me, this had um, mostly pears, right? It looked like most of the cells were paired up and they had a very circular shape. There was also a lot of bacteria in that wine. And this could be because it had a really slow lag time. It took a while for this yeast to start fermenting. But I noticed what I think were some lactobacillus in there as well. So for making wine, this potentially could be an issue. It could cause stuck fermentations and it could cause off flavors. My guess is I'm probably gonna get a stuck fermentation here with the distiller's yeast. Maybe adding some nutrients will help it, but I might have to give it a boost using like the Malvin K1V1116 or something like that to get it restarted. But it still has time. It's still very actively fermenting. So if my end goal is to turn this into a peach brandy, those off flavors produced by the bacteria could add some really nice flavors in the brandy. Let's hop over to the K1V1116. There was way less bacteria observed, and that makes sense because again, it started fermenting almost instantaneously, which means it doesn't really give other microbes the time to grow in the environment, it kind of takes over. And this was also circular shape, but I noticed a lot more of these branched um, yeast cells. What do they call those? Pseudophase? Pseudophase, I think? some pseudophage, branched pseudophage. Anyways, now as soon as I moved over to the D47, I noticed that there was a super high cell count as compared to the distiller's yeast and the K1V1116. And not a lot of the cells were paired up. There was a lot of single cells but I also found some pretty big clusters of those cells just hanging out in areas together. So yeah. The Premier Cuvée also had a super high cell count. Similarly to the Red Star Distillers yeast, I also found pears and I found a lot of clusters in there too. And the cell shape was more oval, which kind of aligns with the morphology of Saccharomyces bionis. And there were also some elongated cells. I noticed a little bit of bacteria, I think more than I saw in the Lolvin. Similarly, the Premier Cuvée kind of took a little bit of time to get started fermenting, but there's not nearly as much bacteria as I see in the distiller's yeast. Now the difference in cell count here could be due to the stages that the fermentation is going through. I also sampled from just under this peach layer in all four of them. So yeah, I'm sure that where I sampled is also going to make a difference in the cell count that I see. But the lower cell count that I observed in the Red Star Distillers yeast could be because it is still ramping up and reproducing. Whereas the lower cell count that I saw in the K1V1116 could be because fermentation is ramping down. You can see that there's a lot of lees settling out right here. So that might be a lot of yeast cells that are starting to settle out of solution. Now it's possible that the D47 and the Premier Cuvée have kind of reached that point where they've hit like maximum reproduction and now they're just fermenting out until there's no more sugar left. <laughs> All right guys, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions or anything like that about microbes. I think this is super interesting. So if you do as well, let me know and stay tuned because I will be tasting these soon once they've fermented out a little bit more and I'll do a side-by-side -side tasting of all four of them to see which one I prefer.